Welcome back. Today is a very different day for me because unlike in my usual van life videos, this time I'm not alone. Today we are waking up right on Lake Eldon at a free campsite called The Orchard. In this video I'm going to be talking about how different van life is when you're solo to when you're traveling with another. But for now, let's make some pancakes and enjoy this view. You feel like summer days to me Warm, tender, sunny rays I hope that we are meant to be You say nothing at all when we meet Yet somehow I know your history Oh, come what may, I'm ready I've been doing solo fan life on and off for the last year. It was never something I intended to do and was more of a means to get away from the world rather than explore it. At the time I started van life, I was going through a pivotal point in life and felt very lost. I turned to nature as a way of working through a lot of these emotions. And in the first six or so months, van life really provided that for me. It taught me to appreciate every small little thing in my day and look at life through a lens of positivity. For that, I am forever grateful. But in my last stint up to New South Wales, something changed. It seemed all of a sudden I didn't want to spend time completely alone. This time, I craved a community. For the first time in my van life, I wanted to have others around me and I wanted to share the amazing things that I was doing. And now, I'm here. I'm here with the love of my life, cramped into a tiny Mitsubishi Express, exploring my home state. And honestly, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change the van, the location, or even how short this trip is. I'm just glad to be spending it and sharing it with him. Where I once stood and looked at a view alone for only a few minutes, I now bask in for hours making pancakes. Where I once quietly walked through the sites and got shots for my videos, I now had someone to share that with. We share silly inside jokes about our adventures, point out the things the other misses, and get funny and lighthearted clips of each other. I think over the last few years we've had this shift in society where we have all become isolated. We don't have many friends and we don't rely on one another in times of need. We have isolated ourselves for a variety of reasons, but it seems that we condemn the idea of relying on one another. Of course there are plenty of examples of the negatives of codependency, but in a world full of lonely people and the feeling that we have to do everything on our own, I think being open to a little dependency is a good thing. This one country song that talks about digging roots and building a life. I mean, which country song isn't about that or a truck, I don't know, but it certainly puts me into a space of introspection. Looking at the life I've lived so far and where it's heading, I finally feel a peace knowing wholeheartedly that the way that I'm going now is where I want to go. I have someone to share that adventure with and look back on with fondness. Because when I look back on my solo adventures, the thing that I actually appreciated the most was human connection. Yes, all the sites were beautiful, but I really am fond of the memories where other people were involved. I really enjoyed my time traveling solo. It really taught me a lot about myself. It definitely taught me how to be more effective with my time and get myself out of a rut easier, be more efficient just in general. And it also reminded me of the fact that, you know, there's a lot of really lovely people out there and I definitely needed that at that point in time. 
But I think one of the main things that I certainly struggled with was, especially traveling as a solo woman, uh, I was always thinking about my safety and security. I was always worried that someone was following me and whether or not people knew I was traveling alone. And that certainly played on my mind a lot because I didn't have anyone to fall back on or to just help me while I was traveling. I also found as well as a solo traveler that you really need to rely on a community around you, whether that be with other van lifers or potentially at a place of work. Because if you don't do that, you tend to isolate yourself and it does actually get quite lonely only in the long run but if you're only doing it temporarily and for a short time I do believe it's okay. However on the flip side it's not all peaches and roses as well. There is a lot more collaboration that needs to go on especially when you're living either with a partner or a friend out of a teeny tiny space like this but the good thing is, is that you do have a community around you and you do have someone to bounce ideas off of and even just share the experiences with which I think is really really valuable. So even though there is some tightness in space, especially with Murray, like if I was to do this like full time, I would have to make some drastic changes for it to work. But I think overall, I've really enjoyed having someone travel with me and having someone to just share those special moments with. And it in turn, it's made it a lot more valuable to me as well. Even though I only got a little taste of it this weekend, I am certainly very well converted to no longer doing solo van life. I think I just at this time in my life really want to be sharing things and sharing it with my partner is certainly one of them. If you ever wanted to do van life, I would certainly recommend having a look at this next video. It's all about the budget of a standard van lifer and a budget one, and I'm sure you'll be able to afford it too. But I'll see you on our next adventure. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now it's reality. Before I go, I have one final thing to do. One of my subscribers, John, has asked for me to rev the engine of Murray so we can find out how he sounds. So let's do that together now. Not bad. Thanks for the suggestion, John. Bye.